Do you see anything in common with long-term glioblastoma survivors? Yeah, that's a good question. I do. Um, attitude. Um, I, I, you know, I wish there were a drug or sequence of treatment that I could say did, did something, but I'll tell you my anecdotal and empirical observation that two things perhaps make a difference. One, I think is, is attitude. I think patients who take uh, the big five or the big six um, to heart, and I'll tell you what they are in a minute, do well. And that is, you know, find what's meaningful for you and brings you significance in your life. You know, eat well, Mediterranean-like diet. I don't think there's any other special diet, but, you know, eat for what works for you. Sleep the right amount. Help your body to recover. Exercise and be active. Um, novelty. Still do novelty. And, you know, again, you got to make your mind and brain work. But I think a sixth uh, important realm of that is med some sort of meditation practice to understand how your mind works, probably also evolves into the de-stress part of what I mentioned, but I do think it's an important part of taking things as they come. And for whatever reason, it seems like the patients who do well are oriented in this direction where they're very open to almost radically changing their lives within these realms sometimes. It is also curious, and what we we do have a, an observational study going on that a lot of cannabis users do seem to fall into the long-term survivor category. They all use it differently, but um, it's amazing. So we started a registry study to ask all our patients. So if you come to UCSF and you're not on it, please ask your physician about it um, to follow both patients who've used and not used and how it relates because patients use for different, you know, they use it for seizure medicines, nausea, sleep, anxiety, or anti-tumor properties.